Hey everyone, Alan here, coming to you with the review of Nikon's 800mm 6.3 PF lens for the Z mount. So I've been testing this lens for a few weeks now, and I think I have enough of a feel for it to give you some of my thoughts. I did already put out a bleeding edge uh, first impressions video, which I'll link to right here, but in this video, what I'm gonna do is go into just a little more detail. I'll go through the lens specs, show you some of the features of the lens that I like and maybe don't like. I will give you some of my impressions from using the lens out in the field, and I'll show you some example images that I took uh, from out being out in the field and then also I took the lens out for a full day to a bird park and so I've just got some really nice examples to show you of how the lens performs in terms of image and uh, sharpness and rendering. So if you are considering this lens hopefully this will give you some helpful information as you make your decision or if you're a gear junkie like me and you just like to watch videos like this hopefully it will provide a little bit of entertainment. So with that all said, let's jump into first some specifics about the lens and the features on the lens itself. The 800 PF is built with mostly plastic to presumably reduce weight, but it still feels solid and premium in the hand. The front element is way too large for a lens filter, so Nikon has included a 46 millimeter drop-in filter slot at the back of the lens. We've also got a focus limiter switch, which will either allow the lens to focus through its entire focus range or limit the focus from 10 meters to infinity. Right above that, we have your standard auto and manual focus switch and a custom programmable function button which I have set as one of my focus memory recall buttons. To reduce strain on the camera mount, Nikon has included strap mounts on the lens collar. While I like this inclusion, I do find it annoying when I have to take my strap off just to rotate the lens foot. On the right side of the lens, Nikon has included a focus memory set button. I love setting this to a particular spot while I wait for a bird to land or to fly. The memory recall buttons I've set make it a snap to focus right back in on the action. Nikon has included a padded lens foot that makes it easy to hold the lens while walking around. I find it very comfortable and right away my preference has been just to carry the lens around this way. The bottom of the lens foot has two threads for attaching a tripod plate. Be warned that the screw holes are two different sizes. One is a quarter inch and the other is three eighths of an inch. If you have an Arca Swiss plate with two three eighth inch screws, you'll need a threaded adapter and I learned this the hard way. Next up, we have the focus ring. I have no complaints about the functionality of the ring, but I do want to complain about the placement. In my opinion, it's placed too far towards the back of the lens, which makes it awkward to use. And if the lens foot is down, the awkwardness is even worse. I personally think that Nikon should have swapped places with the focus ring and the control ring. Speaking of the control ring, here it is. I personally don't use it and I have disabled it. Towards the front of the lens are four more custom buttons. Please note that they are all linked together and cannot be programmed separately. Along with the other function button, I also have these mapped to be focus memory recall buttons. The lens hood locks on using a unique unlock switch. It does take some time getting used to, but the hood stays on consistently and I like it. And last but certainly not least, Nikon has included all of the premium coatings that you would expect with this lens to reduce chromatic aberrations, etc. Okay, so as I mentioned before in my initial impressions video, the very first thing that you'll likely notice about this lens is just how incredibly lightweight it is compared to how it looks. Opening the box and looking at this lens, you're gonna think that it's going to be a challenge to carry around and handhold, but you know, the first time I picked this up, I was shocked at how light it feels compared to, again, how it looks. And I've asked, asked several people now um, to take a look at the lens and then just pick it up and I've gauged their initial reaction and it's always the same. They go, oh man, like this is so lightweight. I would not have expected it to be this lightweight. Um, and for comparison, Nikon made a 800 millimeter 5.6 for the F mount back in 2013, so over 10 years ago, and it weighs 10 pounds. So you, you would have to have a tripod or a monopod with it for support. This comes in at only a little over five pounds. So we're looking at half of the actual weight. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit in a minute, but it's half the weight and at only a third of a stop slower, it costs significantly less. So even though it's a bit of an expensive lens, just 
the the value that you're getting in terms of the ability to handhold and only have a five pound lens is something that no other lens can compete with for any brand as far as I'm aware of at least. Please, if you know of anything that can run toe to toe in terms of being an 800 millimeter lens for this weight and price um, from any other brands, let me know in the comments down below because I'm, I'm unaware of any. So that is incredible. Uh, now, the second thing I noticed when I picked up this lens is how big it looks. And in fact, I still haven't gotten used to how big this is, especially compared to my 500 PF. And I think um, it, it isn't just me. Uh, every time I've brought this lens out for the last few weeks, I have gotten comments about it immediately from everyone around me. I joked in the last video about a dozen people walking up and saying like, oh, that's quite the lens you've got on you. And you're trying to shoot something in outer space. And, you know, I, I mean, it's every single time I bring out this lens, I start to get comments about it. Just be aware if you have this lens, it's seems to draw a crowd and get a lot of attention. Um, and if you don't like attention, that could be a bit of a negative. Uh, so just bear in mind, it is, it's, it's huge and people notice it and they want to comment about it and talk about it. I mentioned this before, but I want to talk about the price of this lens for a second because it is expensive. It's a $6,000 lens, $6,500, which is not for everyone. In fact, it might not be for me. I'm still deciding. But that said, it's interesting because its predecessor, an 800 millimeter 5.6 for the F mount, which weighs twice as much and is only a third of a stop faster, is still more expensive than this lens. The 800 5.6 new right now runs somewhere around eight and a half thousand US dollars, which is insane. And used, it's still about the same price as this brand new lens. So if you're looking for an 800 millimeter and 6,000 US dollars is in your budget, this was probably gonna be your choice just for the hand holdability alone. I mean, unless you really, really, really need that extra third of a stop of light. So it's in a sense expensive, but in a sense, cheaper than its predecessor, which is unlike any other lens that I've ever seen, especially at this focal length. So I think really for you, the only consideration is, is 6,000, 6,500 US dollars too much for your budget or not? And if you need a super telephoto lens at 800 millimeter and you've got the budget for it, this is gonna be your choice. All right, so next up, I wanna just give you some of my impressions from using this lens in the field, starting with revisiting a little bit the size and the weight conversation. Uh, and it's really just about how hand holdable this lens is. I would say that the hand holdability, if that's a word, is off the charts. For an 800 millimeter, I would have expected to be very fatigued and to be very unable to hold my arms up without a monopod for long periods of time. And I found that to just not be the case. I can hold this lens for a really long time, carry it around, I don't get too tired, and it's not really a problem. By the end of the day at the bird park, I would say, you know, I, holding my arms up for a really long time, waiting for a bird to move or to fly, I was getting a little tired, but that was after a whole day of shooting. I can just imagine the possibilities that having this will open up compared to one of the heavier, older super telephoto lenses. So if you're worried about it being hand holdable, it absolutely is and you should not be worried. The second thing I noticed is more of a symptom of 800 millimeters, I think, than necessarily this lens itself, but it's how lost I get when shooting songbirds in branches or thick foliage. It's just a little tough with that much depth of field to focus through to get all the way through it fast enough to find the bird sometimes. On the other hand, in open environments, fields, you know, at the edge of the forest, I've had no problems. It's, it's easy to find what you're looking for. You know where to focus uh, and it acquires focus very snappily and I am happy with how it performs. It's really just in that thick foliage where I've had an issue. On the other other hand, if you are thinking that having an 800 millimeter lens is gonna be a magic bullet to shooting wildlife that's really far off in the distance, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine called Heat Haze. Where I live in the southeastern United States, it's humid and it's hot and heat haze will soften an image because of physics 
no matter what focal length you're shooting at. And it's even worse and more exaggerated with this lens if you throw on the 1.4 times teleconverter where you're shooting at 1,120 millimeters, you just can't always get a sharp image. So if you are considering this lens, just be ready to shoot early in the morning, late at night, or on cooler days, or you're going to be a little bit disappointed with the heat haze in the atmosphere. But let's flip it around the other way. Let's talk about the amount of reach you get with this lens. And, uh, you know, barring things that you can't control, again, because of physics, like heat, haze, etc., what I want to do is set up an experiment where I set up my tripod and I walk away from it and I take a photo with the 800 and the 500 PF and maybe a few other lenses like the 400 or the 300 PF. And from an aerial viewpoint, I wanna show you how much further you can be from the subject and still fill the frame an equivalent amount, if that makes sense. So bear with me, I'm gonna grab my drone, send it up in the air, and I'm gonna show you just how much reach you can get and how much further you can be from a bird without potentially scaring it away and still fill the frame just as much. Okay, so I set up the ZF, which is conveniently bird-sized dish on a tripod, and I walked as far away as I could to still get a frame-filling image. Notice just how far away I can be with the 800 PF. With the 500 PF, this distance is cut nearly in half. I am notorious for scaring away birds, so this gets me to pretty dangerous territory. With the 400, the distance is exactly half of that of the 800 PF, which is to be expected, and I'm even more likely to scare a bird away. The 300, while an incredible lens, just puts me way too close for birds in most situations. Okay, so let's talk about the maximum aperture of 6.3. I will admit, and I said this in my first impressions video, I was a little nervous about a maximum aperture of 6.3. The 500 PF has a maximum aperture of 5.6, and I already find that to be a bit limiting. This is a third of a stop slower, and I was nervous that I was going to end up in a lot of really high ISO situations because of that lack of light. And to an extent, my worries were founded. Uh, in the forest like this, I do find that I end up with a high ISO, especially early in the morning and late in the evening. That said, the Z9 and you know modern post-processing techniques can really do a lot to minimize the amount of noise. On the other hand, as I already mentioned, I don't find myself shooting with this lens in the forest very often. I'm looking at maybe wide open spaces. And, and I think that's where, I, where there's a subject that's just really far away and I wanna bring it closer. Uh, I think that suits my style of photography and that's what I'm looking for. And because of that, I'm out in the open where there's a lot more light and the maximum aperture hasn't really bothered me that much. But if I ever find myself in the forest and I find that I need an 800 millimeter and I need it to be faster than 6.3, I'll just have to admit that I might find myself being a little limited by this lens, but for my particular use case, I just don't think it's gonna be a problem and it hasn't been so far. All right, enough of me rambling on. It's time to show you some example photos. I took this lens out to Sylvan Heights Bird Park, a lovely little bird park in North Carolina that has aviaries for every continent on earth. And I spent a whole day out there testing some lenses, including the 806.3. So I've got a lot of great images to show you, as well as some that I've taken out in the field back at home. And I think they're gonna give you a really good sense of what this lens can do. I will say off the bat, the lens is incredibly sharp, even wide open, and I love not only the way that the image renders, but also the, the fall off from the subject to the background is a little bit magical. And I think you'll see it in the examples, but there is just something a little bit special about this lens. So without further ado, on with the examples.
right, well, I think that about wraps up this review. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button so that YouTube sends this video to more people. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. Uh, and I'd just like to say a special thank you to everybody who's been tuning in. We're already up to 3,500 subscribers at the time of recording, and I'm just so excited that the channel continues to grow. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.